I, yeah, so I'm obviously part of, speaking as part of this series about the kingdom DNA. Um, and um, the passage which I've been given is a familiar one. It's of, of Jairus and of the woman who, who touches the, the, the cloak of Jesus. But rather than me reading it, I thought we would just listen to um, a, a dramatized version because actually it's amazing. I felt really touched when I, when I watched this, even though I know the story. Just hearing it in a different way just can trigger something else. So have a look at the video. So much better than me just reading it out. <laughs> yeah, so probably two stories which are very familiar to you. Um, so first of all, obviously, the little girl, daughter of the synagogue ruler. So his job is kind of enforcing those purity laws. And then you've got a woman who's been bleeding for 12 years, who is, um, yeah, has been ritually impure, unclean for 12 years. So kind of the, that counterpoint between those two. So... Uh, yeah, she goes around, she's basically an outcast in society, this woman. Um, anything that she touches, anybody she touches becomes unclean. She can't go into society. But yet, Jesus isn't made unclean by her. When he touches her, he makes her clean. And the same with Jairus' daughter. If you touch, in that society, if you touched a dead body, then you were the one who became ritually unclean. You weren't allowed to do it. But Jesus is like, no. I'm going to go in, I'm going to take that little girl. And he transfers his wholeness, his cleanness to her and raises her from the dead. There are so many beautiful things about this story, aren't there? I just love the way that Jesus is interrupted, that he's going along to Jairus' house. But when the woman touches his cloak and he stops, he has, she has his absolutely full attention. There's no kind of looking at the watch, going, oh my gosh, if I don't get to Jairus' house before, you know, this girl's, you know, she's going to, she, she really is going to die. But no, he gives her his full attention. And that's another sermon, isn't it? How, <laughs> how rarely we allow ourselves to get interrupted when, when uh, God's Holy Spirit uh, kind of prompts us. But, so I'm not going to go there, but I'm just going to leave that little, drop that little thought into your heads. Because actually, um, for me, these stories really kind of encapsulate who Jesus is. Just the his beauty, really. I don't, know, I don't know whether you've ever just spent time meditating on Jesus' beauty, just what an amazing human being he was. Um, and there's this the most wonderful description of him, I think, um, coming from a theologian called Dallas, Dallas Willard. And he was asked once if he could sum up Jesus in one word. I don't know what, what word you would use to describe Jesus. But the word he said was, relaxed. Isn't that amazing? So Jesus, is, he was relaxed. And actually, just seeing him actually in that video, you saw him just walking along, and then he stopped and turned and was with the woman, completely 100% focused. He wasn't hurried, he wasn't stressed, he wasn't thinking, I need to be somewhere else. Um, you know, my time is precious, I'm the son of God. But no, he was relaxed. And actually, he just taught us how to be fully human. And actually, that is what we're trying to be, I think. We're trying to become more like Jesus. And actually, he's teaching us how to be fully human. Psalm 51, I feel, kind of puts it beautifully. When, um, so I've kind of got slightly out of, oh, out of sync with my slides as I do sometimes. I'm going to bin the slides. If you, can, if you can catch up with me, Phil, catch up with me. But to be honest, I tend to kind of write my notes and then kind of just deviate anyway. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so basically, there's a Psalm 51 um, where uh, um, King David cries out to God and he says, purify me, cleanse me, um, make my heart clean. And actually, that is what Jesus does. He's kind of the answer to that, to that prayer. Um, and, you know, this, this invitation is for everybody. These two stories come in chapter 5 of Mark. And at the end of chapter 4, um, the disciples say to Jesus, or they say, who is this man that even the wind and waves obey him? Because he's, he's calmed the storm. And chapter 5 is kind of answering that question. So the, there are three stories. There's the story of a demon-possessed man. So he kind of goes over, the, Jesus goes over the lake and he casts out the, the demons from, um, from the man and uh, casts them into the pigs. 
and you've got um, Jairus' daughter, you've, you've got um, uh, and the bleeding woman. Kind of three of the most outcasts of society. Jesus is saying, this is who I am. I am for you. I am for you. I am for you. For all of us. For the least in society. And I don't know whether you notice, but what Jesus says to Jairus, he says, only believe. And that's a real challenge, isn't it? If you're in that place today and you're thinking, oh man, that's the big one. <laughs> I would love to believe. I, I've got friends who, who say to me, I would so love to believe what you believe. And I really sympathize because I think there's, you know, we're, all of us are on a journey of belief, aren't we? And we are all... Uh, you know, what we long to do as Christians is kind of point people towards Jesus. And we, we just know that there are lots of steps along the road. But if this morning is one of those mornings where you actually feel really touched by the Holy Spirit and, and actually really feel God's presence here and, and that message about Jesus suddenly makes sense and you want to say yes, then we absolutely are for you. We cheer you on and we'd just love to pray for you at the end. But actually, that question of do you believe is for us all because there are other challenges which are brought up um, by this passage because, um, as I said, that you know, Jesus kind of is teaching us how to be fully human. So Jesus, when he was here, he was fully God but also fully man, living in complete dependency on the Holy Spirit. So Jesus says in John 14, 12, Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do all the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. Do you believe that? <laughs> do you believe that, church? <laughs> because that is, that's great, good. Because actually that's something we should all be saying amen and hallelujah to. But yet I think these are words which are, are, are so challenging that we kind of like try, well, it's just tempting to put them to one side, isn't it? I think, I can't, I'm not sure I can engage with that. Because it's, it's easy to think, oh, well, God was, so Jesus was fully God. That's, that's how he was doing the miracles. You know, that's not for anybody else, is it? But actually, if you look at the early church, then, the, you know, the picture is very, very different, isn't it? All through, especially in Luke, um, the, the role of the Holy Spirit is really, really clear. So all through his birth stories, the Holy Spirit was there. The, um, at his baptism, the Holy Spirit was there. Jesus was sent out into the desert in the power of the Holy Spirit. He comes back in the power of the Holy Spirit. He's doing all his ministry in the power of the Holy Spirit. If he was fully God when he was, doing, when he was on, his, in, on the earth doing his ministry, he wouldn't need the Holy Spirit, would he? But he is operating out of his fully human self dependent on the Holy Spirit. If it was only God, the, 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 only, the God part of him which was doing those miracles, then it wouldn't be accessible to any of us. But Peter, he was healing people and raising people from the dead. Paul healed people and raised them from the dead. And I just wanted to look really quickly at um, Peter raising Dorcas. Okay, I'm just going to read this out. There was a believer in Joppa named Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was always doing kind things for others and helping the poor. About this time, she became ill and died. Her body was washed for burial and laid in an upstairs room. But the believers had heard that Peter was nearby at Lydda, so they sent two men to beg him, please come as soon as possible. So Peter returned with them, and as soon as he arrived, they took him to the upstairs room. The room was filled with widows who were weeping and showing him the coats and other clothes Dorcas had made for them. But Peter asked them all to leave the room. Then he knelt and prayed. Turning to the body, he said, Get up, Tabitha. And she opened her eyes. When she saw Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then he called in the widows and all the believers. And he presented her to them alive. Can you see the parallels between the two stories of, of Jesus raising Jairus' daughter and Peter? There's so many kind of parallels which, which the gospel writers want to draw out. So, if Peter was doing this, dependent on the Holy Spirit, praying in the name of Jesus, that is the model of the early church, which we should be following too. Probably about, I probably prayed for 
for the first time to, for somebody to be healed about, I don't know, 20, yeah, probably about 20 years ago. And I, I was like, God, I want the gift of healing. And thank goodness God said, hang on a minute, love. I'm not, yeah, not sure. Because actually, I was praying for completely the wrong reasons. I think I was praying entirely for my own, I want to be a healer. <laughs> it, would have been, it would have been disastrous. <laughs> thank goodness God sometimes says no to prayers. And actually, it may well be that, he, you know, I'll be 80 and God says, maybe, maybe you might be mature enough now, but the, you know, I'm fully expected that I will never be mature enough for God to give me the gift of healing because I think that is reserved for people. Yeah, there are, there are definitely people in the church who have the gift of healing, but I'm not one of them at the moment. Although I think it's not a bad thing to have that longing in your heart. <laughs> um, but you know, that is, it's in the, it's in the list of, of the gifts of the spirits in, in, in 1 Corinthians as part of what we should be doing as a church, as part of our kingdom DNA. Um, it's not just a, a switch you can flick. Of course it's not. It's all about that lifelong intimacy and communication with God. And it's all about God, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not about us at all. Um, but, you know... I long to be able to show God's kingdom come. In 1 Thessalonians 1, 5, it says, Our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. And this is what we can offer to others. We don't want just to talk to people about the kingdom. We want to demonstrate the kingdom to others. We want to be able to pray for people and see God working. But if we don't ever pray for people, then we're never going to give God the opportunity to work, to heal, to bring restoration. So, do you believe? Let's start in church this morning. In a few minutes, I'm just going to ask the band to come up. And I fully believe that God is going to do some healing this morning. And it won't necessarily because somebody has prayed for you, somebody who's, who is maybe more mature in faith than you or more, who you think is more deeply spiritual. We don't actually need <laughs> other people to pray for us. We just need to be open to God and say, come Holy Spirit. I'm really hoping that there are some people here this morning who have some words of knowledge I don't know if you may not be familiar with that term, but sometimes if we just ask God, say, is there anybody who needs healing this morning? God can sometimes just drop in a word into your head. And before the service, our lovely prayer room prayers, um, just, there was a picture of a tree with words on the tree and actually, but the picture was of you have to reach out and take the words. So there are, so I really believe that that picture was saying that the, the, there are people here who will have words of knowledge for healing for other people. But maybe you haven't been brave enough in the past to share them. But actually you just need to reach out and take them. And you don't need to come to the front to share them. You can, you can, you can tell them to Matt and we can communicate them with, with the congregation that way. But actually, if you can offer a word of knowledge to somebody else, that can just be sometimes just a real, God has seen me. And that can just be a real avenue for God to be able to, uh, to work. So, yeah. So there's two questions this morning, aren't there? Do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus? That he came for you because he loves you so much. And he wants to bring you healing and wholeness and restoration. He wants to cleanse you and just to kind of set you on a rock. And do you believe in healing? Do you believe that that is part of our, the kingdom DNA, which we as a church can bring as a blessing, not only to each other, but to the world? Okay. I think now's a good time to pray. <laughs> so I'm going to ask the band to come up. I'm just going to ask you to, yeah, just put your hands out, maybe close your eyes. And then we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to come. And I'm just going to leave a time of quiet. Uh, and if you want to come up and share a word, that would be great. But sometimes quietness and silence in our culture 
is what we need most and what we're lacking most. So, Jesus, we just thank you for your beauty. We just thank you just for the person that you revealed yourself to be in these stories in Mark. The one who is for us. The one who is Lord over sickness and death. The one who is sees us all. We just thank you that you lived on this earth completely dependent on the Holy Spirit. And that you invite us to live in the same way, to become more like you. We just pray this morning, Holy Spirit, we just say we welcome you here. Come and do the work that only you can do. As we just come and sit here in quietness before you, would you be at work? Would you move among us? We just say we are yours. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.